Hello, hello, welcome to this class. Um, as a quick reminder, we have been talking about the Code of Sacred Principles. There are 12 of them. So if you feel inclined and you want to know what some of those principles are, feel free to go back and watch some of the videos on this page. And what we're going to start talking about hopefully next week, um, my next book, The Art of Returning to Love, How to Show Fear and Stress the Exit, uh, is in uh, process of being published right now, so it should be available next week. So our time together today is going to be about our heart. Um, our heart center, our heart space, our heart system is a big deal. It really matters. And so sometimes we forget and we put a lot of emphasis on our heads. So I just want to go through four simple steps that will help you um, connect and be in that sacred space through the portal that is your heart a little bit easier. If we've not yet met, I am Lori Morris, a 30-year practitioner of Chinese medicine and the founder um, and director of the Sacred Health Academy, where we teach women who have tried everything to, you know, get her health back and keeps coming up short. She knows she needs to include her sacred self, but she's not really quite sure how to do that. And we do that. We do this all virtually, all without overwhelm. It's an educational journey that one can take, at, you know, at her own pace. And, you know, it just activates the capacity for us to live with a calm mind, a peaceful heart, a vital and healthy body, and the ability to have impact in the ways that are important to you. So let's talk about those four steps. The first step is when is touching your heart. Now you can touch any part of your body, but because we're talking about the heart, it's nice to just put your hands on your heart. We have our heart, our main heart center, which is right here on our breastbone, our sternum. And then we have what's called the high heart. And so this is like a whole, a whole region, if you will, a whole center of, of energetics that we've never been taught. And you know, you might know some of it, you might know a lot of it, but there's always more to learn about the heart because it literally is the connection point to the treasure of life, right? So when we touch this part of our body, it signals to our mind that we're safe. It, it, and especially when we do step two, which is touch this part of our body, it brings our awareness to this part of our body. And then if you would be caught, if you'd be willing to consciously breathe and slow your breathing down and deepen your breathing, those two things together signal to the body, to the mind that we're safe. And that's an important thing because if we don't feel that way, if the mind feels on alert for any reason that it, for whatever reason, it might feel not safe, um, we'll have a really hard time, you know, getting, going into this deeper connection with our heart. So the first thing is to touch. The second thing is to breathe. And the third thing, you have options here, is to access the feeling of gratitude or look at something beautiful. Those two things actually change our brain tracks. You can do one or, or both of them, but it's usually when we're in a state of you know, discombobulation, it's, it's pretty easy to access one or both of those, right? You can look outside your window and see a tree. And, and I mean, I think trees are beautiful. So for me, that's looking at beauty. You can look at the sky. You can look at anything in your environment around you that is beautiful to you. And that literally, you know, hand on heart, touching our body, bringing our awareness into our body, it's called being embodied. Uh, breathing and then looking at something beautiful will change your state in a pretty short period of time. And then the other thing, and this one comes out of heart math, is to, so we touch, we touch, we breathe, and then we access a, a high state of consciousness and gratitude happens to be one of those. It's pretty easy to find something to be grateful for, even if it's just the color of the pants that you're wearing today, or the, you know, the cup of tea that you have sitting in front of you, or, you know, any number of things. It doesn't have to be you know, something big and dramatic. It, it can just be little things that you sort of string together in gratitude all day. Because I'm going to recommend that you do this. You know, it's this is like a practice, right? So train yourself to do this on the regular throughout the day. And you'll notice that your energy will stay more stable. You won't feel as exhausted at the end of the day. Um, you'll, you will have access to a more sort of centered uh, way of responding to the things that are happening to around you and 
that matters because when we're constantly in fight or flight, it's extremely hard on the inside of our body and our, you know, our organs, our, our systems, right? So it, this is a really big deal to do this, right? Not to mention, so this is step four. So one is touch, two is breathe, three is either look at something beautiful or find something to be grateful for. And those three things alone are very, um, that, that kind of changes our, our, our neural pathways. And that is, that is where it's a big deal because different hormones get released when we're in that state that are healing and that regenerate and, and you know, uh, well, regenerate is the best word. All the tissue and the organs and the systems and the inflammation and all these things in our body that need access to that, those energy, the, the, uh, the release of, of chemicals and hormones that are healing versus the opposite, which is when we're in a stress response, the chemicals that get released are corrosive to our body and there's no access to healing. So just just the simplicity of those three things alone are a big deal and it matters not to mention the 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 energy that you're putting into the into the field so to speak which which affects all of life right it's like the butterfly effect you can look that up if that's if this speaks to you so that leads me to the fourth part which is we're, we're touching we're breathing we're either in gratitude or looking at something beautiful play with on the regular when you have extra time you know in the num in the times that you do this during the day imagine that your heart space is is increasing it's opening it's like opening so big that it, that it is bigger than your your physical body and it, it becomes like the field around you you can also um, move the edges of this open heart space into to fill the entire room that you're in you can feel, fill your city, your state, your country, the world, and even move the edges of your heart space out into the universe. And the, I don't even know how to put into words the, um, the it's one of those things, like you have to feel this for yourself. It, it's hard to describe. Like, how would you describe to your best friend who's never tasted a strawberry, what a strawberry tastes like. You can't, you just have to say to your friend, here, taste the strawberry, and you give the strawberry to that person and you say, this is what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so this is the feeling with our heart, you know. So I'm inviting you to play with opening the, the space, the center that is your heart, and, and increasing it uh, as far as you can imagine yourself increasing it. And then bring it back to yourself, right? Because it, it is your energy, so you want to bring it back. But this, this practice of opening and closing, expanding and contracting your heart center is like building a bicep, right? Like that there's a there's a thing that comes with this. And and some of the things, I don't have time to give you all of the things, <laughs> but that will some of those things also, the things I don't say today will also be in the upcoming book. So really, really um you know, come back to this page next week and the following weeks because, you know, you're going to get access to this material. We're going to do a book club together um, and you will learn how to actually engage with this energy more powerfully. So when we're in this expanding our heart space, uh, the, in Chinese medicine, our heart is considered the seat of consciousness. And consciousness is kind of another, it's, it's synonymous with intelligence. And we're talking about the intelligence of life, the intelligence of nature, the intelligence of the source of all that is, right? So that's kind of like high level, high level, high techie techie intelligence, right? <laughs> and so you want to you be able to be in connection with that because it, it will help you um, find solutions, um, you know, get, make the right decisions, uh, ha get guidance for the things that, that you are looking for to, to make your life be a life that is optimally thriving, not only from the perspective of health, but the perspective of expression and ease in your, in your mind, body, and life, from the perspective of abundance, having access to all the resources you need to have an optimal life and to love. So this is kind of a big deal. I, I, I've come to, to realize, and I'm starting to talk about how, if there were one thing that would, that would be the most optimal thing for you to do that would affect everything in your life in a good way, it would be 
this thing that we're talking about, it would be this connection to, uh, you know, to your heart. And I'm, I want to come back and talk about what else it gives you because it, it affects, you know, usually we're, we're kind of in the mindset where, okay, I have my work life over here and I've got these problems I got to deal with and I've got my family life over here and I've got my spiritual life that I'm trying to like keep up with and grow and be, you know, be a better person. And then there's the world and there, you know, there's all these like segments to life and we run from segment to segment, kind of some days it feels like, like with a chick, like a chicken with our head cut off and we try to make things better, but you know, then there's, then we do something here that's good and we run over here and then this turns into like another kind of, you know, storm of not goodness. And so my point is, is that if, if you're willing to do the one thing, which is this connection to your heart, and connection to your higher presence, that will actually ripple into every segment of your life in a good way. And, and not only every segment, but every crack and crevice of your life. If you, if you don't um, give up on, on this practice, right? So, okay. So seat of consciousness, which is also intelligence, it's also the connection point to your higher presence. So your higher self, your higher presence, your higher wisdom extends itself in physical form as you, as me, into mo the molecules that make up your and my body. And that's kind of a big deal, right? So if we, if we live a life disconnected from that, from that source of life, then you know, things get pretty hard, but when we do the work of living in connection with that source of life, and this is the connection point, right? Like the energy from our higher self, from our higher presence, from our I am presence, flows down through the top of our head, goes down through our center and drops into our heart space. If we keep that connection open and, and, and we let that energy flow, and that energy is, is a light force, light carries love. So this is like you know, it's like liquid love, if you will, if you want to see it that way. And, and you allow it to continually fill your heart space. It overflows like a fountain and it fills every cell of your body, of which we have 70 trillion cells. I like to remind us of that because in every single cell, in every one of those 70 trillion cells, there are 70 trillion atoms and in every single atom is an electron. And that electron is the blueprint of intelligence. It's cellular intelligence. It's wholeness. It's health. It's your creative expression. It's abundance. It's it's the capacity to have um, a, a thriving life is the best way for me to say it, right? So this is the center point. This is the connection point. In your heart and in the spaciousness of this energy center lies treasure that you have yet to unearth. There, there's, the, there's this center point of peace and stillness that also has right action connected to it. So it's, it's always this yin yang dance, right? Like stillness and activity, light and love, you know, alpha omega, particle and wave, yin yang. It's, it's, this is, and they can't be separate from each other, right? So human divine, those are all, these are all elements, right? Night, day, these are all elements that are not separate from each other, even though we go about our mental understanding as if they have as if, as if they are separate. This is kind of one of the biggest problems we have. Division, separation, right? We're, we're bringing ourselves, at this point in human consciousness, we're bringing ourselves back to wholeness, unity, and that can only happen through love and through our heart and through our connection to our higher presence. So the other thing that this center point does, in addition to the, you know, the connection to our higher presence and the seat of the consciousness and intelligence, all the things we've already said, is it connects us to the universe through a literally through a weave of light that we don't necessarily see with the naked eye, but I'm telling you, it exists. There, there are there are um, magnetic photographs of it, and it's stunning how beautiful the the tapestry of the universe is and the colors. And I mean, it's just it's just magnificent. So if you ever have an opportunity to see that, the movies. Um, the Thrive movies, thriveon.com, I think it's .com, Thrive On, the work of four, um, uh, what's his name, four, uh, I can't remember his name right now, Kimberly, and, oh, I see his face, anyway, Thrive On, if you, if you were to Google that, there's two movies, part one, part two, they're documentaries, in the second one, there was the most gorgeous photographs of this, this colorful weave, this unified field that is, when you look at it, you, you ought, I, I did, I'll speak for myself. I automatically 
register the perfection of life. And if we get out of our own way, if we get out of nature's way, the perfection of life can be prevalent, more prevalent than not. And so, you know, yes, we have some cleanup work to do. <laughs> We're in the midst of that now. Um, but I wanted to just, I wanted to just offer this, uh, this, this ongoing practice and invite you to consider. So let's just recap real quick. Step one, put your hands on your heart. Step two, breathe. That signals to your body that you're safe. Um, and it also gives you the, a better chance of being in your body. Step three is to either look at something beautiful or access um, the feeling of gratitude for anything, anything around you. Um, and then step four is to play with opening your heart space, opening your heart center to, um, you know, and, and initially if it's just to surround your body and then your field, that's perfectly okay. But I do recommend that you keep it in the back of your mind to continue and, and continue expanding your heart space, your heart center, and then, you know, bring it back to your own heart center. Being just grateful for your heart is a perfectly wonderful way to be grateful. So go play with that. Like and share this page, if you will, because this work that we're talking about, it's always been important, but we're, we're coming into a very um, pivotal time in human consciousness and in the world. And this work is, you know, the, the, the recipe, if, we, if you will, for humanity to sort of um, move forward in the ways that we all crave and want in our heart with peace and justice and liberty and love and health and, you know, the things that are, are, are ours by divine birthright, by innate and inalienable birthrights, we need our heart on board for this. It cannot be just our head alone. We've tried to go with our heart, with our head alone for a long time, and we have proven to ourselves that, yes, we're smart. Yes, we have the capacity to create amazing things, but we need our heart in the game. So I'm inviting you to get your heart in the game, <laughs> um, one heart at a time, that's all we need, and, um, and share this material so that we can get more hearts on board. Thank you so much. I appreciate your presence, and I look forward to next week.